Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com. In this video today, I'm gonna to show you how I take this pile of lumber and steel sheeting and turn it into a raised flower bed. The finished product looks something like this. So it's a pretty simple design, but still good looking. And it uses some really basic materials that you can get at pretty much any lumber store. The metal, this metal sheeting you may have to order in, they may not have it in stock, but uh, the rest of it's all just simple uh, eight foot two by fours. And in this case, I'm using untreated two by fours. Okay, so uh, to see how I do that, let's uh, get started. I'm gonna turn that pile of material over there into some usable pieces cut to the lengths for my project. And then I'll show you how I assemble it. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly cut all my pieces that I need for my raised planter. Um, yours is probably gonna vary depending on what sizes you choose, but uh, I'll discuss my sizes and uh, show you the cut list and everything of, of what I built. My planter is basically 94 inches long and about 34 inches deep, like wide, and it's a couple feet off the ground. So, but anyways, I'll show you that all after. Right now we'll probably just speed it up. I'll cut this material and then we'll get to assembling. Okay, so I've got all the pieces cut up. <clears throat> I set some of them out of the way here to the side because the main things I want to build first are the frames. So you're going to have two, two front or a front and a back. So that's the long frame is what I'm referring to as front and back. And then you're going to have the two ends, which are the shorter frames in my case. And like I said, I'm going to near the end of the video, I'll put up a, a piece of paper that kind of shows the cut list and uh, material list and that sort of thing. So just uh, stay tuned for that. But I've what I've got left here on the bench is just the materials that I need for the frames. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll do a couple of the shorter frames first. So I'll maybe put this out of the way because these are for the long frames. Just kind of get those out of our way. This is an extra piece for something else you'll see later. Okay, so uh, we've got a, got two ends. Now you want to look your two by fours over, I guess, uh, looking for the the side or the face that you want to face out that uh, looks the best or looks the way you want it to look for your finished product. Um, so I'm gonna. It doesn't matter if you have them up or down. I'm just saying orientate them uh, so they're the same way when you're putting things together. So basically, what we're gonna do. In, in my design is we're going to end up building the ends which will be two boxes or two shapes just like that. I'm going to use uh, number eight, sorry no number ten five inch uh, deck screws. If you're using pressure treated wood in your case or something then you'll want to use a ACQ approved or uh, treated screw. Uh, I'm not, I'm using standard lumber here so this is just a basically a zinc coated uh, screw but I'm using it a little heavier gauge and because it is a longer longer uh, length because basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting to put this frame together I'm going to put two screws in each of these connections okay so I need them long enough because this is three and a half inches in my case so I need to still get some some decent meat there to for the end of the screw to get a hold of I am also going to uh, pre-drill my ends. So if I take, uh, what did I do with my pencil? Here it is. I'm just going to take a scrap of wood here and I'm just going to mark 
on on this piece here so I, I have an idea where my three and a half is for my pre-drilling. So I'll just quickly put a mark. It's just a guide. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is in this area, this is how it's going to go together. Again, I need to get two screws through there. Now I'm going to pre pre-drill it and uh, I'm using a number 10 um, screw there, as I said, and I believe I'm using a, oh, what is it, a five? No, I went to nine sixty, uh, sixty thirds uh, for the drill bit. So I'm not, I don't really want this, in this case, this screw just to drop through this first piece of wood. I still want it to grab some, some wood there too as it's threading in. So I went a little smaller than you would normally uh, pre-drill. And also you'll, you'll notice that my drill bit isn't long enough to go right through, but it's gonna go far enough that we shouldn't have any issues with splitting. And uh, this is kind of a standard length drill bit that you're gonna have for this size of drill bit. So uh, short of going out and buying one that's another inch longer, um, I'm just gonna use this one. So, so basically I just wanna eyeball these ones for the short ends. I wanna come in about three quarters of an inch or to an inch off the ends. And I just wanna drill a nice plum uh, pre-drilled hole. Okay, so that's the first one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing from this line that I marked. Just come back three quarters to one inch. And I'm gonna pop a hole in there and I'll do that on both ends. You can measure that out if you don't trust yourself, but like I said, just three quarters to one inch away. Okay, so that'll uh, do our first frame. I'm just gonna mark uh, this one out while I'm in the business of pre-drilling those holes. So I'm like that and that. Okay, so those are all pre-drilled, ready for my next process. So I'm gonna grab my long screws and I'm working on a flat pretty flat bench here so it, it helps me to be able to flush this up pretty easily just by simply laying the, the parts down and I just want to drive some screws in there so I'm flushing up this end and kind of flushing the top and these are like I said five inch five to six inch would be good if you're doing the same kind of design I'm just putting in them in there just a little bit countersunk If I didn't pre-drill it, this, these ends would likely split more times than they wouldn't, so that's why I pre-drilled it most of the way. Okay, so you can see here, just with the uh, wood and everything, a clamp might come in handy, just to help hold that together since I'm working by myself. So I'll just stick a clamp on this end, just to kind of hold it so that I don't have to manhandle it quite so much. Okay, so there's the frame. And this is going to be the, the good side that's gonna face out. So I am just marking an X on the inside so I don't get it mixed up after. And I'll throw this other one together as well. Now, uh, it is a planter, it's an outdoor piece of furniture or whatever you want to call it. So uh, it's, in this case, we're not going for something that's, uh, you know, pristine condition. That's why we're just using uh, standard lumber. So you're going to have the odd spot where you're, you know, it's just going to be, maybe have a knot in it or some roughness. But in this case, for the look I'm going for, that's, that's going to be fine. If you want something a little more uh, high, finish or high quality finish, then you're going to have to go to a better quality lumber. I was lucky to find two by fours that had four corners on them up here in Canada. So usually they've got bark at least on one corner. You could put construction adhesive in these joints if you wanted to. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, by the time I put these screws in and I attach the sheet metal on the inside, it's going to be lots holding it together. 
The uh, customer wants to stain or paint these themselves, so that's why I'm not doing any kind of finish on them. If it was me, I would probably stain or paint them first before I, at least before I put the tin on. Just be a lot easier, but they wanted to do this themselves, so. And for all I know, maybe they aren't, maybe they won't even paint or do anything, just let them weather, I don't know. They were talking about painting them, I think. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, this is my nicer face there. This side's a little rougher, so this is the inside. You can see I was talking about right here about, you know, obviously your lumber isn't gonna be perfect on some edges, so. Okay, so that's the small frames. Now really we're gonna do basically the same thing with the, with the long ones. So get them up here. And I'm gonna pre-drill them as, as well. Oops. Just about don't have enough bench for all this stuff. Um, okay, so these are my nicer faces, so I'm gonna keep that. Yeah, so just like this. And um, now on this one, on these ones, uh, what I want to do is I still, I'm still screwing these together just the same as I did the others. So I still need some uh, marks on here as a guide. Um, but what I want to do on these ones is I want to keep the end screw out here on the end. Right out here. I'm going to keep it a little further away. And that's because... Uh, when we go to screw this whole thing together, the uh, ends are going to butt into this and I need to screw through here as well to, to join the four corners together. So if I have screws too close here, everything's kind of in the way. So I'm going to make sure I keep these a good inch and a quarter from the end on these ones so that I don't have uh, any interference with screws and uh, messing around hopefully. But same, same idea, I just want to pre-drill them and then we'll screw it together. Okay, now on these uh, long panels as well, if you remember back in the, the example of the one I built already, there's going to be a center piece of wood in that frame as well. So we need to find the center of this panel or this uh, board. Uh, what are we, 45 and a quarter? I think. Let's see if that works out. So it'll be one of these here. Oh, my math isn't too good. So it must be 44 and three quarters. Yes, 44 and three quarters. So I want to, again, just mark this so that uh, I can pre-drill those. Probably not as critical. This probably wouldn't split out here in the middle, but I'll just pre-drill it anyways. Like so. Set some of these out of the way. Okay, so. Good face up. Best face up. Screw these together now. Again, five inch number 10 deck screw is what I'm using. Okay, now I'll flip it around so I can do the other side, other edge. So, and again, I need a little squeeze. You can see I've got a little, little gap there. Okay, so uh, I just want to finish getting these screws in. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the second frame. As I just did.
that was 44 and three quarters, I think. Yep. Okay, so I'll pre-drill those holes and we'll put this frame together. Alrighty, so we've got our uh, four pieces, four frames, and we can start putting some, some metal on. So I can get rid of these big five inch screws. Now I'm using, uh, these are actually screws for this four sheet metal or metal roofing. These ones I'm using are about inch and a quarter and I think they're a number 14 or something like that screw. Now you don't have to use this big of a screw, it's just I had these on hand, they're the right color, not that anybody's gonna see them after, but uh, yeah, I decided to use those. If you're gonna use a deck screw or something like that, uh, you may have a problem where you're gonna have to pre-drill possibly the screw locations where these will just, uh, will just thread right in. So anyways, I'm using them because that's what I have. So uh, now the metal, the tin goes on the inside of your frame. So you want that on the bad side. If you have a, if you have a side that's worse or rougher than the other, then that's the side that you're gonna wanna uh, put it on. Uh, so I'm going to flip this over. workbench and I'm gonna grab my metal so the way my design is set up you watched me cut those sheets of metal uh, they, they were eight feet long they are 33 and a half inches wide you watched in the video I cut them cut four pieces out of each one of those sheets now I've kind of designed the, these boxes around uh, using you know average size pieces that anybody can transport uh, in their in their vehicle from the store. So I used eight foot lumber. These would have almost uh, done about an eight and a half foot box with the amount of sh tin I have and with the normal overlap. But uh, because I'm using eight, eight foot lumber. Uh, I just have to overlap a little bit further and you'll see what I mean here uh, when I get started. So we've got our pieces here. Kind of just have a look to make sure if any side's better than the other. Now, when I put this thing together, the end frames are going to butt into, butt into this end here. Or into inside here so I'm just gonna give myself a bit of a mark so I don't get the tin too far far out to the edge where it's interfering with uh, you know when I install the end the end frames so I'll just get myself a little bit of a pencil line depending on your tin if it's a fairly flat edge it's really not gonna matter but you don't want a high profile like like it is here um, interfering with uh, what you got going on with the overlap or the butt joint. So what I kind of did is I, I laid my sheets out and figured out, you know, what looked better as far as the lap going over and under. Um, Cause I found it changed a little bit depending on the sheets. So obviously it doesn't matter what it looks like on this side. We want the other side to look. So you can kind of see how the, the pieces overlap each other and they nest together because of the profile. So I just kind of laid things out to get an idea before I screwed anything down. So I know if I'm, you know, 
going going about the right way or if it's going to work out or what's going on so then i just want to have a bit of a look on this side and i think they aren't they aren't laying down quite as nice as they did on the other one so i'm going to try lapping them the other way just to see what what happens I think that's going to work out better. I'll just get rid of this one sheet so I can kind of show you what I'm seeing. So I'm just kind of holding them together to see, you know, what this is going to look like when it's when it's together. Because you hopefully don't want the seam to look like that. You want it to sit really tight together. And it seems like uh, this wants to fit nicer if I go underneath. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, my length was pretty good the way it was working out before you can see that uh, this total frame on mine is 20 25 inches and I cut these pieces to 24 so I've got some leeway up and down which is what I want right because uh, it doesn't have to be tight none of this is going to be seen once the once the uh, planter is filled with dirt so so I think I'm pretty good here. I think I can live with that. I just want to see what it looks like with the sheet on again. Yeah, I'm going to be all right. I was just making sure I wasn't too, too long that way. So let's get this first sheet tacked down at least. Now you don't need a whole lot of these screws on here. Once the dirt's in, it really can't go anywhere. And obviously you want to put the screw in the, the down rib. Not up here, you're going to squeeze the sheets. Okay, so just kind of get it evenly situated from the end here. So, now it's very easy with some of these sheet metal sheets to stretch them or shrink them by putting your screws in on an angle or, or whatever. So you got to kind of be watching that as you go to be sure you're, you're not stretching things too much out of shape. Okay, so that's about what I was putting in each sheet. Now, one thing I don't want to forget is, okay, this is the bottom down here. In the middle of the planter on the bottom, I'm gonna have this, this cleat going in between to try to keep the bottom from wanting to spread once you get some dirt in it. So I need to make sure I cut the metal out in that area uh, to allow for that and that's going to be right right in the middle again so we know that that number was 44 and three quarters I'm going to go 44 and a half uh, yeah I'm going to go 44 and a half just to give myself a little bit extra leeway uh, to, like that's so if I go that big that'll give me a little extra room pop over there and cut that out if I can. So this tin, you watched me in the earlier in the video, I was just cutting it with these, these uh, metal shears. I use these for vinyl siding and thinner tin like this. You can use aviation snips too. I'm gonna try these shears first. Okay. So I got that good enough. Uh, so we got that. Then I can move down here to my next, 
bunch of sheets. Make sure things are sitting nice. Looks all right. So this is just a, I believe they call this a galva loom, is what this finish is, kind of a galvanized uh, tin corrugated metal. There's different profiles in that, but I like this, this look. It's kind of an older fashioned look. Could cut this with a grinder too. I cut it all with snips just so I wouldn't have any sparks here in the shop, but uh, you could cut it with a grinder and a, and a cutoff wheel. So you can see with that, putting the screws in, I'm not getting too fancy. I'm not worrying about if they're straight or not, because uh, really in reality, nobody can see these once, once this is all built. So, okay, so we got that first one on there. You can see the joints are pretty good. Once you get some dirt against there, that'll help too. Uh, yeah, so that's one done. I've got to do the other uh, three pieces and then we can move on to putting it together. Okay, now I designed the, the, the width. The, I knew what the customer kind of wanted for width and I basically also based it on the full width of one of these panels. Like I said, remember, these pieces are going in between the front and back, okay? So, so the metal can, can span basically the full, full distance across uh, this front and back if it needs to. And that should be what ends up happening here, yep. So we'll zap some screws in that. And uh, then, like I said, I'm going to do the other couple, probably off camera, and we'll come back and put it together. Okay, so here's one of my ends. Okay, I'm going to zip off these other ones, or zip them together, and then we'll come back and put this box together. Okay, so I've got all the panels covered now, and it's time to put the the main box all together. I'm going to use number 10, um, three and a half inch deck screws. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put this bottom center spreader bar or brace in here. Okay, so that's just flush or even a little bit higher would be fine. I'm going to try to attempt to build this on the bench where it's easier for you guys to see. So we'll see how it goes. So we've got that. Now we need to put an end panel up here. Okay, so like I said before, I want to put this end here. Oh, what am I doing? Pin goes in. <laughs> uh, this here flush with that. So we're just going to pull this together. Uh, if I throw a small clamp on it, keep it from falling over. Well, I'm lining things up. Actually, that lined up pretty good. Okay, and we'll. This is where we kept the the screws back a little bit. So I'm gonna. Oh, where did I screw that other one? Right in the middle, I think. Yeah. Stick one here. I'm just pre-drilling that because we're fairly close to the end. I'm about three quarters of an inch away. Try to prevent that from splitting on us. There, that's better. Okay, so I'll do the same thing on the other end. If I can manage that down here. I think if I slide this down, it'll probably be out of your picture here on the end. But... You basically get the idea of what I'm doing here anyways, so. Inside in, get it right this time. Again, I'm just flushing it up on the end, just like I did on the other end. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so we got that. Now basically I'm just gonna go around to the other side and put the, the other side piece on. And then I'm gonna maneuver it down onto the ground and show you how I put the top on. Okay. So here I've got this uh, planter down on the ground and you get a bit of an idea of the size now. Uh, basically the client wanted a pretty pretty wide planter really. Uh, normally I, I think these would only be maybe two thirds as wide as this, but they also wanted something high enough that they could sit down on when they're working, you know. Um, now I'm gonna put a, a finished edge all the way around. You can kind of see it on the other one on the top, which is just gonna be two by four. But it's, it's partially to protect the, the homeowner because the tops of these sheets are, are jagged and they're sharp and everything. And plus sitting down on this isn't that comfortable, but once we get something a little wider, it's a little easier on the butt to sit there and, and uh, work or weed or whatever you wanna do. So I had cut these, these pieces already earlier and uh, mitered the corners. And I'm gonna attach them using three inch deck screws and a little bit of construction adhesive in these in these miters. So the way I've got it designed is that when these go on, they're gonna hang off the outside about half an inch and then whatever hangs inside will cover the edge of the tin plus a little bit further down to, to uh, you know, protect anybody who's sitting up on there. So I'm just going to get this first one started. So like I said, I'm going to put a little construction adhesive on it. Oop. So we'll just put a little bead on here and this will just help hold things together. And uh, hopefully the camera can see what I'm doing over there. So I'm going to put that one corner together and to start out with I am uh, just going to put a three inch screw right through the right through the miter here. So I'm not too worried about getting things lined up exactly perfect just yet. I just need to get this screw stitched in there to help hold it together. Okay, so you're trying to get this flush and your corner decent out there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually, no, now that I've got that, I can probably get it to sit here and start getting it lined up. Yeah, it's gonna work here. So like I said, I, I'm looking for a half inch overhang out, out all the sides on the outside. So that's easy enough to do. A Little bit of measuring. Can, I can manipulate that in so I can get one screw in here and let's just make sure this doesn't move on me. I can get a screw in here. Now these corners have quite a few screws in them if you remember. We've got four going down through the top. We've got some horizontally. We've got this extra one I put in the miter. So I'm going to just stay back. Oh, just, just inside this outer leg here. So I'm going to be somewhere in this range and I need to stay in Oh, uh, let's say about an inch and a half. Something like that. So if I stick that there, get one in the middle here. Actually, something I didn't do was check if this box is square. I better do that before I get too carried away. Get it at least sitting half close to square. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably seen me do this before, but when you're working on a, a rectangle or a square where you've got, you know, either all four sides the same length, or you've at least got opposing sides the same length, you should be able to measure your diagonals corner to corner. And uh, if those diagonals are, are equal, 
than your box is square. And actually, as soon as I measured that one over there, I knew it was because I remembered 100 from the other one. So it's actually sitting good. So we're okay. So yeah, that's an easy way to check for square on, on uh, something like this. It's just diagonal measurements. So we can throw this screw back in. We were about to put one here in the middle. I just kind of want to get things roughly put into place and then we'll screw it all off. So of course I want my best sides that I have up for these uh, pieces because you know this is what people are going to touch and sit on and that sort of thing. No, it wouldn't be a bad idea to run the sander over them or even the router on these outer edges. Actually, these two by fours are pretty good, but I probably will run uh, orbital sander over it quickly, just with like an 80 grit, just to take off any splinters and, and uh, you know, slivers and that sort of thing. Try to make it smooth as kind of possible for outdoor garden furniture. We're good there. Go down to this end and get our last piece put in and then we can get everything secured down. As you can see, this is uh, not that bad of a project to do. It's actually taken longer than I thought it was going to, but uh, the video shooting always adds a bit of time. I had a little bit of camera problems, which you might have noticed. But uh, overall, I'm not exactly sure probably took me close to three hours, I'm guessing, with all my messing around. I didn't keep real close track because I got stopped a couple times, but... Okay, so I'll stick a few more screws in between all those ones. And that'll secure the top down well. And... I'm going to hand bomb the camera around a little bit so you can get a little closer look. All right. So let's just uh, pop the camera off so you can get a better look now. I'll get a, get a little closer. You can kind of see how everything sort of goes together. And there's our there's our lip there. And then inside, you can see really once the dirt's in, you know, I don't know how full you're gonna fill it exactly, but probably three, four inches from the top. And uh, yeah, there's really not too much of this inside that ever is gonna be seen. There's our brace down there across the middle. Now, one thought I did have, because this is so, so wide, uh, like I said, this is a little wider than what I would typically kind of see. I'm a little bit afraid that maybe this top in the middle is going to want to spread over time with the weight of the dirt and compaction and everything. So part of this, part of this idea of putting this brace in here is I was thinking if a person had, had to down the line, you could put a piece of threaded rod right through this whole thing with a nut out on each side. You know, you can countersink that nut in there and uh, just run the threaded rod right through here in the middle and down, you know, six or eight inches and it'd be below the dirt still. And it'll just keep that, that uh, middle from wanting to spread because it's probably got a little bit of, let's see if I can, well, it's actually sturdier than I thought it would be, but just in time, they may find that they have to do that, which wouldn't be that hard to do. But anyways, you can kind of see what we've got going on here. 
Okay. So I'm going to get this camera sitting back up and we'll do a wrap up. Okay, so we're all wrapped up on the, the uh, planter box project that I did here. So I've got the two stacked together there just to create a bit of a backdrop. Um, pretty, pretty basic project really. Uh, overall cost, uh, this, this actually cost me more than I originally planned uh, because I'm shooting here during the pandemic. Uh, lumber prices have just gone uh, through the roof. They pretty much tripled. So this cost uh, to build the two total and materials probably about $100 more than I was expecting. So it was about $400 with the, with the metal and the, and the wood and a few miscellaneous screws and stuff to build these pro this project. So, so basically a couple hundred dollars each. Uh, Time-wise, I kind of did some looking back. Um, I, I think it took me around two and a half hours to build the first one. And then with when I shot the video and, and built the second one that you just watched, it basically took me about two hours, uh, not including all the trouble I had with the camera and stopping and stuff. It took me pretty much a day to shoot that because of the troubles I had. But anyways, so, you know, you're looking at a, an afternoon or a day or whatever to build this, uh, you know, by the time you go and pick up materials, build them, finish them and stain or paint them or whatever. So, so it's a, it's a decent little project for the day. Um, also, I realized when I was planning this out that uh, I kind of uh, used dimensions and sizes and lumber that was pretty readily available and easy to transport. So. You know, a typical DIYer can go down to the to the store and uh, order these materials or pick up these materials and build these. The the metal sheeting, depending what you use, they may have in stock at your local store, or you may have to order it. So just check that out first. Um, yeah, I think I think it went well. I think they look good. Hope the customer's happy. Um, Riley, you've got a little bit of staining and painting to do. <laughs> once I drop these off, but uh, I know you can handle it. So we'll get that to you. One other thing that I talked about I was gonna add was this uh, cut list. This cut list is for one, one planter. And I'm not sure that you can really make that out very well uh, on the screen there. So I'll put a PDF or uh, some kind of file in the description below the video. So go down and check out that description. Uh, check all our descriptions out in the videos because you're usually going to find some extra information or links to, to some materials or products. So check that out. You'll find links there for our Patreon page. Um, uh, a lot of times we throw the forum link in there, which is a great asset if you you know are doing some kind of project and you need some answers to some questions you have. The forum is a perfect place to go and post your question up and you'll get an answer usually or two or three pretty quickly. Okay, so check out the description. Obviously, click the thumbs up button uh, for watching the video. Uh, share this video with all your friends. I would appreciate that. And uh, yeah, what else can I say? Oh, subscribe. Have you not subscribed yet? Click the subscribe button right down there. Yeah, this one here. Click that. Uh, once you are subscribed, you can set up your notifications if you wanna be uh, notified uh, anytime we post new material. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Hi, it's Shannon from houseimprovements.com. Would you like to see me take this pile of lumber and metal and build a raised bed garden planter thing, frickin' stop?